Hey, so Google just released its new AI image and video generator called Visk. It's currently in Google Labs experiment phase. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use it step by step. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let's get to it. So to use Visk by Google Labs, we're going to go over to Opera and connect via this, select the location and connect it. Now on here, you can describe your idea or roll the dice for prompt ideas. And I'm going to show you step by step what all of this does. I'm also going to animate it and show you how it looks like. So on here, to get a prompt, I'm going to click on this dice icon, which is going to give us this. And I can just click on it again and again to get more ideas. So let's say we want this one. Next to it, we can change the aspect ratio. I can change from landscape to square to portrait. This is just for generating an image. It's not for the animation. I'm going to show you how to do that later. So let's just go for landscape. That's the most popular one. Next to this, we got settings. This is seed. I'm not really sure what this does, so I'm not going to explain more on this. Let's click on this enter button, or you can also press enter on your keyboard which is going to start generating this image. And you can see here, we've got two of these images and they look really nice. I can click on this to favorite it, or I can download this to my computer by clicking on this button, or I can delete this from here. There's also this button. If you're not seeing what you expected, you can add or edit details, and then you can click on generate. So let's say I add this prompt here at the end. Let's see what it does. It's just going to start a new generation instead of editing it inside the first image. This was one I created accidentally. So this is what it created and it made it look really different from this one because this was more of an art style. This is more of a 3D art style. This is more of a 2D art style. Anyway, it is still good. I can also refine this. I can also refine it. I think this is what we were looking for when we clicked on this button. So let's click on it for refine and I can add additional details. So let's say I add this prompt here. The characters are looking at camera. Let's press on enter on a keyboard or press this button and it's going to start generating an image. Let's see what it does. All right, so this is what it has created. It is again a different image, not the same one. I thought that it's just going to make everyone look in the camera, the front view. That's what my thinking was, but over here, it has just generated another image. All right, now maybe you're wondering, what is add images? Let's click on it. On the left-hand side, there is subject, there is scene and style. Based on this, I can add another style. So I can click on this or I can click on plus. I can click on the dice to generate a randomly generated image, or I can just hover on it, upload an image, or enter a text here, a prompt which is going to generate an image for the style and then the scene and the subject. So I'm just going to press on the dice button to generate a random style image and for the scene like this and for the subject. These are now set in subject, scene and style. So now when we generate an image, it's going to take all of this into account. Let's try it again. So we're going to press on this button I have a feeling that because inside this prompt, there are some specifications like mid-air food, muted orange. I'm just going to delete this one and add another prompt. I'm just going to use this without any specifications. So miniature city built inside a giant acorn. So I'm going to press on enter on my keyboard or press on this button. So let's see if it takes into account all this on the left hand side. And there you go. So it did take into account the style, the scene, and the subject, it made it look like this. So let's remove this and add another style like this one, or let's say, let's go for another one like this. This looks like 8-bit game style. Let's try it again. And just like I said, this was 8-bit voxel style. And here it has generated it again in 8-bit voxel game style. Before it was more like knitted style. Now you may be wondering, if I refresh this, all our generations are gone. Okay, so how do I get it back? In order to see all your generations, you need to press on my library on the top, and you're going to find all the generations that you've done till now over here. Now let's click on try animate, and it's going to take us over to Gemini Advanced. And you need this plan in order for the animation to work. 
you're going to get it for zero dollars for one month so let's click on start trial i'm going to sign up for this trial and i'm going to show you how the animation works and i've signed up for the trial i'm just going to press on x on here now i've generated another set of two images and i'm going to press on animate now it's asking us to give it some animation what would you like to see so i'm going to type in looking happy and running i'm going to press enter on my keyboard all right that looks great but if for some reason you're not able to access the whisk animate by google labs but you've got the google ai premium plan so in order to access this animate feature, this VO2, you can go over to aistudio.google.com and over here on the left hand side, click on video gen, put the image by clicking on this button, add the image, type the same prompt. On the right hand side, you're going to find run settings. Just select the aspect ratio, video duration, and all these other things, and then click on run. And that's it. That's how to use Whisk Animate by Google Labs. Did this video help solve a problem? If it did, let me know with a like and comment. Also on the right hand side, you're going to find more Google tutorials and AI tutorials. So see you there and bye for now.